Welcome back to the shop. It's a beautiful day in Baltimore, Maryland, and I am annoyed. Not because it's a beautiful day, but I am annoyed because Selmer refuses to change from their harebrained idea of pivot screw springs even though people have been complaining about them for 30 years. Um, for those of you who do not know, I'll give you a little primer on how pivot screws work in musical instrument mechanisms. So, you have the end of a key. You have a pivot screw. Perfectly drawn. You know what that is. In a perfect world, or a less annoying world, the end of the key is going to have an angle or a taper or a parabolic curve that matches the end of the screw. There's all sorts of engineering and physics to get into here, but I won't. Um, but basically, the screw is stopped at a certain point from going into the key. And that certain point is perfectly set, so there is virtually no gap between the end of this screw and the end of the key. So that fits in there perfectly with just a thin film of oil or grease in there. Everybody's happy. That does two things. That takes care of the radial play. So if you were gra grab on the end of a key and try to wiggle it this way, it takes care of that in hopefully 360 degrees and it takes care of the axial play um, because the point of this screw is perfectly in there and it has no place to go and of course you have one on the other end here that's doing the same job so everything is aligned and it does not move and everybody that I know has special tools for cutting that shape in there so it matches and you can be really obsessive about stuff and it gets into a whole series of um, speechifying and theorizing and everything like that but we're just going to keep it basic for now if you want to know more about um, the ins and outs of what pivots are used, what types of pivots are used that you can find out there uh, the guys over at Music Medic did a very nice live presentation of uh, pivot screw details and if I can find it I will put the link in uh, in the comment section um, but this is how everybody did it and this is how almost everybody still does it all of the Selmers up until the 1980s the Super Action 82 80 Roman numeral 2 was the first one where they unveiled this new feature that they have. And basically what Selmer did in the pivot in the end of the key, instead of having an angled section like that, they did a straight straight counter bore. And inside that they put a little doohickey that had an angle and a spring. And then your typical pivot screw. The theory is you don't have to worry about the depth fitting now. You have to where you previously had to adjust either the head of the screw or the counter bore in the post just to make this clear let's imagine there's a post here previously my perfectly drawn 
bell pepper shaped post here, you'd have a counter bore. And if you needed the screw to go in farther, there were tools where you could make that deeper. Or you could shave off the underside of the head so the screw would plunge in deeper and take up that gap. That is fine. Now, well not now, they've been doing it for 30 freaking years, they have this spring contraption that springs in and out and that takes the job of what the pivot screw is doing. Pivot screw is still doing something but you've got all these How do I say it politely? Excelling at mediocrity? I don't know. Is that the best way to say it? Um, any engineer is going to look at this and see all of the different places where you can have uh, extra room just so the thing functions. Here you don't need any room. You can have nil point zero 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 dot 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 in a digit amount of space in there and it can still function if your surfaces and profiles match. This you have have to have extra room here for the spring to actually spring and for this piece to move. And then the tip of the screw doesn't even really match uh, the end of this device. The, the shape is not right. So you get excessive wear. Oh, but wear's okay because the spring's going to take care of it. <clears throat> this is this is a crap arrangement, and I wish Selmer would get rid of it. No other major manufacturer of quality saxophones uses this crap. You don't see this on Yanagasawa's. You don't see it on Yamahas. You don't see it on Kyleworths. You don't see it on buffets. Um, and it's not because it's patented, and it's not because it's a super secret idea. It's a garbage idea, and they really need to change it. So, here's how I fix it. Oh, and here's a cutaway. Here's a, I'll, I'll get a picture of this under the microscope so you can really see. I took one of the spring things and ground it away so you can see that the shape at the end of it isn't even close to the end of the pivot screw. So, happy days. Okay, so, the way I fix this, you can get these out, you need a slightly tapered pin. Uh, this is just a flute pin that I use for general poking things. There is a hole that goes all the way through these, so you can you can put a tapered pin in there and it will stick in the hole, hopefully enough for you to just pull it straight out. Then, you know, a lot of people will swedge this and they'll put all sorts of grease in there. Screw that. Loctite. I have cleaned this already with acetone or something similar. I'm just putting a little bit of thread locker on there. And this will take a couple of minutes to set up and cure. This is the low strength stuff, so. And I just push it in so it's flush with the surface. And then when I want that to stick in the right place, I put this in the right place and I put the pivot screw in. And I turn it in all the way and then back off an eighth of a turn before the thread locker is set. Then for my final fitting I can gently after the thread locker is set I can turn that screw in and force that spring-loaded contraption into the perfect spot and it's gonna stay there. Um, I used to solder these in place thread locker is so much easier and faster. Um, so this is how I do it 
and then when that uh, screw is in place it's a little bit stuck because that spring hasn't compressed remember I backed it off an eighth of a turn I can get in there with my cutting tool that's the same profile as the screw and shape that so it's a matching bearing surface the way it's supposed to be so I do this on all my overhauls on Selmers it adds a little bit of time um, but it's going to be right I know the adjustments going to hold and I wish Selmer would just fix this problem it's it's just enduring mediocrity um, it is a garbage idea if you want to have the best manufacturer saxophone don't just rely on your damn market share to say that you're the best make the best damn saxophone and that includes this little stuff that the players don't see but the technicians all swear at like the pivot screws end of rant thank you addendum I have this key mounted I have the stupid spring things loctited in place and the screws set in place everything's reamed fine um, no wiggle this way no wiggle this way do not be deceived by axial play on Selmers because they have started fitting the key itself so damn close between the posts and when I took this this is a series 3 soprano when I took this apart and I removed the spring stupid spring things there was friction between the ends of the keys and the posts before I had faced off the posts um, if pivots are done right you don't need the end of the key to go all the way to contact um, you can make it look visually perfect and still have a couple of thousandths gap in there so yeah it would wiggle if you didn't have pivots fit right or if you had the stupid spring things in place yeah it's gonna wiggle um, but do the pivot screws right and then you don't have to fit the keys and have friction where you don't need the friction to start with end of rent part two